Hi, welcome to another 3D Quick Tips tutorial video. Um, today we're going to be making a tiling texture in Max. You can see here, these are some that I have made. So, yep, that's what we're going to be doing. So, basically the idea is we're going to start with a plane. Let's just drag this guy out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to instance this. So when you clone, shift and drag, instance it, pull it out a little bit, use your snaps, and snap it to this guy. And the reason why we're doing this is we're only going to model on one of these. And then that way we can preview the tiling as they all update in real time. I actually already recorded this tutorial and I didn't have my new microphone set up. I know it still doesn't sound great, but yeah. All right, cool. So basically what we've done is we just made enough to cover the middle one and we're gonna get to start get started working on this middle one. So I'm just going to add in some random shapes. I don't really know what I'm gonna make, but let's just make something somewhat simple. And you're gonna notice though, as we update, or as we model, all of these other ones are going to be updated in real time. And so this is how we're gonna work on making everything connect uh, seamlessly. So here you can see that we have this terminating and it doesn't go over to the next one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this piece down here. Let me put a material on these guys really quick. So it's a little easier to see. So you can see that they're, they're basically having these seams here. So we just go to an instance of one of these. And you can start modeling on any one. Just use your snaps. And you're going to want to connect it up. The cut tool didn't want to work with that. And we're just going to make a design that will work with We'll work with the tiling. So the goal is to make it seamless and have pieces flow on to the next one. And so you can see we have another seam right here between these two pieces. So we need to incorporate this into the design. So let's actually go to this one. And you can just switch between your pieces when they're instanced and start working on them. And we're just going to do something like this. align that it doesn't really matter the whole point is to just make sure that stuff uh, doesn't have a seam so you can see now we have these pieces lining up here runs off over to here and here runs off over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to inset these inwards. And you'll notice now that they're all tiling. And there's no seams between any of them. The only thing left to do is to add support loops and get rid of these extrusion pieces or these leftover polys from the extrusion. Cool. Now start adding edge loops. Edge loops is the same exact process. It's just that you will have to be thinking about making your edge loops cross over the seams. So you just have to make sure that everything's lined up correctly. So let me connect all these things down here. I'm just trying to make sure that I can get some edge flows for when I add my support loops for sub D. And the reason why I add that extra vert is because Max's projection tool, it, uh, projection method for those tools is very, very frustrating to work with. So 
Sorry about that. I don't know why, but my numlock key keeps getting uh, turned off. I have to figure out why. I waste a lot of my time lately. Cool. So I was just cleaning this up a bit to make it easier to work with. I have one more here. And let's just quickly add some edge loops. So what we're going to do this time, it'll require a little manual cleanup, but it'll make sure things are staying pretty even across all the parts, is we're going to manually inset these pieces and delete the extra edges. So just select the edges on the outside and on the seams and press inset, or sorry, press backspace. And then for things like this, we're just gonna eyeball it and then snap it. So you use your uh, cut tool, target weld it down, snap it. And the reason you snap it is we're gonna do it on the other side Start adding a few support loops. Yeah, you can see here Max's projection is uh, not working too well. Just add another one here. Add a support loop here. edge flow super fast. I'm not looking to make the best model or design for this tutorial, obviously. I just want to kind of demonstrate the workflows involved. I'm not really focusing on modeling quality either. But the most important part really is just making sure that when you cross seams that stuff doesn't have any issues and lines up well. Adding some edge loops here. So we have two big of end guns. We can just terminate these guys on the border since it won't deform it at all. Same thing here. These guys don't have to line up because they're not going to be changing the surface in any way. So we can just feel free to terminate them there. Now we're just going to go back and do the cut with the snap and the target weld on this last guy here. Just add one more loop here. Guide this support loop around this edge. Put a support loop here. Actually, one trick is you can just select these edges. It's not much of a trick, but it works. And then just do ring, connect. And then they all are at the exact same location, so it'll still be uh, perfect when it tiles and across the seams. It's just most important to make sure that the seams line up perfectly, and that's why you want to rely on snaps most of the time to do that. Let's see, did we miss anything? Hmm. Yeah, we could add, we could just do this. So this end gone is a little less crazy. And let's subdivide it. See how it's looking? We missed a piece here. We don't have any support loops. 
And we just want to make sure that these line up so that the width of the shading is the same. This is not a good looking edge, but it doesn't really matter for our tutorial. We just want to show the basic concepts behind it. Cool. And now when we zoom out, put a subdivision modifier on it. Well, actually I just collapsed a uh, STL check, there we go. Put a subdivision modifier on it and you can see that now we have a tiling texture. Now to bake this to a plane for use, all you have to do, grab the four corners of the main piece because you know we only made one real piece that needs to tile. So you only need to bake out that first piece unless you want to have more. And then you can just add your projection modifier and bake it down like you would any other texture. So yeah, that's how you model a tiling texture in 3ds Max. Um, you know, comment on the video if you have any ideas for something you'd like to see me do. I'll probably be putting out a few more gum roads in the coming months, so look out for those. Um, yeah, see you guys later.